What's going on you guys and welcome back to the ARA show. So I just got the Coinbase debit card and honestly it's a pretty interesting debit card to have. In this video we're going to be talking about the pros and cons, who this card is for and how you can maximize the benefits as well as if this is a great debit card to own and spoiler it's pretty good if you know how to use it correctly. So in this video we're going to talk about all those different type of things as well as how you can use it correctly. So with that being said if you guys want to see all that, stay tuned and cue that intro. So before we get into this video, it's important to know you cannot get the Coinbase debit card without getting a Coinbase account. So if you guys want to get the Coinbase debit card, definitely go to the link in my description, sign up with Coinbase, get your free $10 when you sign up and then go ahead and sign up for the Coinbase debit card. It's also important to know that right now they're only open to early access. I believe in the next few months or so as a recording of this video, you can be able to get it for everyone, but right now it's just for early access. I just happened to get lucky with early access and then I got my Coinbase debit card in a giant blue envelope. So with that being said, another important thing to know that this is a debit card and not a credit card, meaning that it doesn't have as much rewards as you can get as, for example, a BlockFi credit card for cryptocurrency. But either way, as a debit card, this is awesome because most debit cards don't even give you rewards in general. And on top of that, while it's already making it better that you can get rewards, you can also buy things with cryptocurrency which is just insane there aren't that many cards that do that and that's the whole premise behind this coinbase debit card is that you can buy things with cryptocurrency now there are a few caveats when it comes to that and we'll talk about that later on in the video it's just cool to know that you can do that but with that being said let's take a look more into the coinbase debit card so we got the Coinbase card over here and you guys can see that I'm paying with USDC. So I have $43.92. One thing that I will say that I don't really like is they count that $43.92 part of my portfolio balance. Honestly, it's kind of annoying. I wish they would separate the Coinbase card from your portfolio, but that's just the way that they have it. Maybe they'll fix it in the future. But either way, another thing to know is you can pay with up to nine different cryptocurrencies, USDC being one of them, as well as Bitcoin and Ethereum. One thing to note is you want to be paying with USDC and we'll talk about this later in the video and that's just because you don't want to be having any transactional fees as well as capital gains. So that's why I pay with USDC and then you can earn two different rewards. One of them is 1% back on Bitcoin and the other is 4% back on Ethereum. And then you guys can see I have a lifetime earning of six cents. So that's just because I got 1% back on Bitcoin. You guys can see how easily it is to toggle between different types of cryptocurrencies. And I believe these are the ones that you can pay with all the way over here. So it might be more than nine. I'll definitely look into this and leave a link in the description just to double check. I'm pretty sure they have like articles and stuff. And on top of that, I've got the 1% back in Bitcoin and then the 4% back in Stellar Lumen. The reason why I choose Bitcoin is because I don't plan to sell Bitcoin anytime soon. So I'll just let it accumulate as I buy more and more things. And then another cool thing to note is I only bought one thing so far. I think I bought like a coffee and some food from Dunks and that ended up coming to $6.08. So I got 1% back on that. So that's where I've got the 0.6 or 6 cents. I don't know why I said point. That's why I've got the six cents over here. And other than that, it's pretty simple. You can add funds over here. You can show the card, which I'm not gonna do because I'm gonna get finessed. But either way, it's really simple. It's pretty user-friendly and straightforward. You can access it from your phone. You can do Apple Pay. It's a great debit card to have just because you're getting rewards on top of a debit card. So with that being said, we're gonna go into the caveats and the things that are very important when it comes to fees and the transactional fees with the Coinbase debit card. So we've got the Coinbase card, a card holder agreement form over here. And as always, every article or link that I use will be in the description if you guys wanna check it out for yourself. With that being said, we've got a list of all the fees for the Coinbase card in general. And this is not including the transactional fees, which we'll go over in the next part of this video. But let's take a look. So we've got $0 for card purchase, $0 monthly fees. Funding is also $0. 
transactions and ATM withdrawal as well as international transaction is all zero dollars or zero percent. And that's what makes it such a great card is because it's pretty much hassle free. And of course, all these zero dollars are from their side. This doesn't include, for example, you take out uh, money from an ATM. You still have to pay the ATM operator, but from Coinbase's side, you're pretty much good to go. It's also FDIC insured, which makes you feel a lot safer and it's all hassle free. So that's a great reason to get the Coinbase debit card. But in terms of the transactional fees, we're going to get into that right now. And you guys will see how you can maximize the benefits with the Coinbase card or how you can not screw yourself over. So let's take a look at that. And if you guys are going to take away anything from this video, it would be this part right here to see if this card is for you or not. So if you guys remember early in the video, I talked about why I use USDC instead of any of the other cryptocurrencies. And the reason for that is if you buy with USDC, you're not going to accrue any fees at all. But if you use a different cryptocurrency, for example, Ethereum or even Bitcoin, you're going to be charged with a 2.49% transaction fee. So that's just for converting your crypto into US dollar. So that's going to be a fee for that. So that completely sucks, especially if you're going with a 1% Bitcoin reward. If you think about it, a lot of people like to buy things just to kind of get the reward. You're kind of losing out because you're going to be paying this 2.49%. And if you're only getting back 1%, you're technically kind of losing money you're like down negative 1.49 percent so somebody correct me if that math is wrong but that's to, that's one thing to think about another thing to think about is you're also going to be getting capital gains as well so unfortunately one of the things that really sucks about buying with cryptocurrency is let's just say you bought bitcoin at fifty thousand dollars and then you end up spending it at let's just say at the time it was sixty five thousand dollars you're going to be paying that fee on that capital gains I guess you can't really say it's a fee, it's more of a tax, but it's just an important thing to think about. So if you want to buy things just for the reward, then USDC is definitely the way to go. If you have tons of cryptocurrency and you don't really care about the fees or anything like that, then yeah, go ahead and go for it. There probably are better options out there. I still have to look into the BlockFi credit card and I'm pretty sure Coinbase will come out with one as well. So if you guys want to see more videos on that, let me know in the comments down below. I'll definitely do more on these cards. You know, it's pretty fun looking into all the terms and policies and making a video out of it. But nonetheless, this is just a really important thing to think about when thinking if this Coinbase card is for you or not. Just to give you guys a personal example, personally, I don't plan to sell my Bitcoin at all or my Ethereum, at least for the next 15, 20 years. So that's why I like buying with USDC, just kind of getting that reward back. So I kind of like to think of it of just buying things when... It's just a normal debit card purchase, not to kind of build a reward, but just because that option is out there and available. Now, on the other hand, if I was looking to sell my Bitcoin or my cryptocurrency, then maybe I would do it, but it's probably not worth it if you're looking just to get that reward. So judging from that, you guys can kind of figure out if this card is for you or not. It's just important to know if you guys get any takeaways at all from this video. If you want that reward and you're just looking to have no fees at all, use USDC. It's the best way to go. And to kind of just reiterate everything, there's a section on the website where it talks about the fees and taxes. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out for yourself. Essentially, it's pretty much just talking about all the things we already talked about. No fees on USDC, but for other crypto, there is a 2.49% transaction fee. It also lets you know a little bit more about the U.S. tax implications. It lets you know that the IRS classifies cryptocurrency as property for tax purposes as well as you have to report it as gains or losses when you buy with cryptocurrency so those are just some things to note another cool thing that you can do with a, the coinbase debit card is you can kind of treat it like a bank so you can store money in there and you can actually accrue interest on usdc so that's a cool way and maybe you can benefit a little bit more using it as a mini bank and the reason why I'm saying a mini bank is you can only spend $2,500 per day and then the ATM withdrawal limit is $1,000 per day. So if you're using this as a business card or something along those lines where you're spending tons of money every single day, this probably won't end up working. Also, just because if you take another look, the limit is $9,999.99. So it probably won't end up working well. But if you're using it to you know buy coffee from time to time like myself, then yeah, it's going to be a great card. So you just have to kind of draw the lines and kind of figure out what works for you and what doesn't. But in my opinion, either way for a debit card, this is a great way to spend cryptocurrency if you want or at least accumulate the reward. 
And just to put my own thoughts into it, I definitely think it's a great debit card just because you're also getting a reward and you're utilizing cryptocurrency at the same time, which is honestly really cool. In my opinion, I think this is a great debit card if you utilize it to its full potential, not if you spend cryptocurrency, which kind of, I guess you can say, defeats the whole purpose. But if you want to get that reward, use USDC and, you know, maybe buy coffee from time to time, get a little bit of reward back, whereas you can't really do that with some of the other debit cards out there. Either way, I think it's just kind of a cool thing to have. It's certainly easy to use if you want. You can even get 4% back if you don't want Bitcoin. You can just switch it right over to Seller. It's as easy as that. You guys can see I did it like legit two seconds. And you can also do the same thing with switching it. But nonetheless, definitely a great debit card. Let me know down in the comments down below if you guys are planning to get it as well. Or if you guys already have it. Let me know if you guys want me to do a different review on a different card or let me know if you guys like this content as well. If you guys got any value, you guys already know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, let me know what you guys thought. And with that being said, peace out guys and remember everybody eats.